Long time no video. Um, basically it's February. Last time I did a video on this it was September or just beginning of October. But um, yeah, I guess it's time to do an update for what's been going on in the in this yard. Uh, well, as you can see, it's in the backyard now, as opposed to parked on the side of the house. Um, basically, what happened since uh, since last video? I actually had videos of stuff that I did before this, but. Um, I never got around to it, and I, and I kind of don't have access to it anymore. The, the videos I was planning on doing in October are on some other computer. I can't get to them. Or at least I don't, I don't know. I don't care to, to use them anymore. Maybe I'll, I'll upload them later. But anyway, um, basically the work I did, uh, as you can see, this headlight is shattered. Uh, one of the times I was tilting this whole hood forward, it actually fell off the deck, which is right here. It was in front of it, fell on top, and completely busted out the lens, whatever. Um, the reason it wouldn't run was because there was a kill switch. Or no, it wasn't a kill switch, it was actually a safety switch down in there. See that I think the wire nut should be in there, but anyway, there was a kill switch. There was no, it's not a kill switch, it's a safety switch that attached somewhere up here. Where oh, wait, that one's still there. It was down there in there somewhere. I think it was for the clutch, but um, I'm guessing where it was attached, it rusted off, and so nothing was pressing it down anymore, and so it wouldn't start. I took that off. Uh, connected the wires with a wire nut and it starts up. Um, the other problem I have with it, I filled the tank up with gas but the choke was stuck open. I actually have a temporary fix right here. I have a new choke cable on the way. Along with some more parts. This place is spring loaded. I pull that out and start it and then I let it go gently. I had to do some carb adjustments too. The carburetor needed cleaning. I actually took care of that uh, over, I think, two months ago. And um, I replaced the air filter as well, along with the pre filter. Although I kept that oven on there for a while, it ran fine. Replaced the fuel filter and the fuel line. It was, um, it was really dry rotted, I think. Like, it wasn't actually contaminating the gas, but, at least I don't think so. But I wanted to replace it anyway. And I uh, changed the oil to winter oil, because I'm using it now. I'm actually running it in the cold. Although it's not that cold today. The steering, it was virtually impossible to steer, even if it was raised off the ground. It wasn't because the tires were flat, although that kind of contributed to it, but when I put these tires on, I still had trouble steering it. I lifted it up and disconnected the tie rod underneath there so that it only spun this wheel. This one turned fine, but the other one had to be greased. I actually, uh, I greased the, uh, that one up and even greased the spindle so that the wheel spun nicely. Um, I threw a sledgehammer into the button here to try and get it unstuck and that was a big mistake. It's now stuck in there. So I'll have to get a big enough Allen key to get this off and take a look at it. Um, when I was running it, I actually had to... Uh, oh, you know what? The other reason it wouldn't stay running was because there was water in the carburetor, I think. I actually drained it off, and then I, I left... I, my solution, my temporary fix, besides this cable, was to just pull out the cable. I loosened it up. Um, and just we'll pull it out and then stick it back in and I actually found that draining the carburetor actually helped a little bit you knew it still had some gelled up gas in there and so it wouldn't run and then I finally put it back in which ran perfectly for a while until it ran out of gas 
the can of gas that I had was also contaminated with water. I finally got it filled with dry gas. But um, as I was running it in here, I was having trouble. I had to actually pull the clutch pedal back, which is also lubricated. I had to lubricate that. I had to pull it back with my foot so I could get it to move, and that was because the brake was stuck. As you can see, the seat's taped up. There's, a, there's several times when I was sitting on this thing, all this stuff is so dried up, it's cracking everywhere. So I have to keep going and getting some Gorilla Tape and covering it up, which is working okay. I keep the seat up and all that. Um, but I, so yeah, it's in running order. I guess I can start it up now. I think I need to shoot more than one hand to do this. So. It's a cold star. I pulled the throttle up, but um, anyway, you see it's running. I I've had a starter cup I was going to put on top here because it, because several times when I had to start this thing the battery kept uh, losing its charge because I had to use it so much. Um, I wound up cutting a hole in the screen. Now I'm kind of wishing I didn't do it because I lo I'm looking down in there now. I'd have to thread the shaft or something to get it attached or find some other way of my own. I don't want to undo the screws either because I tried and it just strips them. But um, no, oh, the battery's brand new too. I uh, the other one was done. It was dead. It was to the point of no return. Um, what else? The brakes actually don't work that well now. Even what my solution to the to the brake getting stuck was. Uh, finding a spring off of that blue tractor over there and just hiding behind the tree. One of the many return springs on it. Um, and you can see it down in there, I think. That's the spring right there. I hooked it up to the holes and and it works fine now. I can actually roll it freely, which I couldn't do before. Like even when the brake wasn't on, it was par like using a parking brake. Um, but anyway, uh, today, what we're going to tackle is the steering. I actually have some parts on the way, like I said. I'm going to try and dig down into that. I was thinking about getting getting the motor out, the engine out too, so it, there was more clearance, but it, it's probably too heavy and I don't want to undo the screws or nothing. I like it where it's at. I'm going to have to undo the dash and all that and get this stuff off. And I want to get this ready for when I uh, get down in there and replace the steering bushing. It actually steers fine now when you're driving, but there's way too much going on here. Like, if, if I'm not careful, it, uh, the gears slip, so I have, um, have to take care of that. Really, I think that's all I'm going to do with this for now. I actually found a Craigslist ad for uh, two more lawnmowers. Um, one that's almost like this, except it's a lawn tractor edition with the uh, yard tractor. Uh, but it's got a deck that will actually, it has the same um, mount, mountain pattern. Where it's going to have these two and that plate hanging off the front axle. Um, I've been like I've been trying to get to this guy for a week for for a few months, but I know that he's still got him. I'm actually going to use the tractor he's got with the deck. I'm going to take the deck off, clean it up, and then store it somewhere under cover until spring comes, until the grass starts growing again. And then I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to use the actual mower that the deck comes off of for my own little, I guess, off-road mower project. And the other one is actually a Simplicity. I think it's a 48 or a 4208. It's got an 8 horse Bergson Stratton on it, but it has no hood, so I'm probably going to keep that hood and see how I can mount it. This thing still has to be scrapped. But I have some more, uh, just, I think two, uh, one more thing I have to get off of it, and it's these two wheels. And I'm going to have to actually take a sawzall and cut the axle off, because they're rusted on there. I'm going to have to try and drive the, uh, the, the uh, axle out of there with a jackhammer, I mean, uh, no, not jackhammer, sledgehammer or something. I wanted to pull the steering wheel off too, but really, there's no way of me doing that. I really don't care anymore. The throttle cable is rusted, so I can't use that for anything. These are actually the wheels, the original wheels off of the Craftsman 2 over there. Um, this one I found actually perfectly holds air, but this one doesn't. So maybe I can get this tire resealed or put a, put a tube in it. Or just put new tires on these rims. Well, this one's nice. Enough. And just uh, put those back on, because those ones I think are... A little too big for the spindles. Other than that, this is it has to go. We're getting rid of some more scraps though. Moving on. More updates on this stuff. This thing's gonna be thrown out in the trash. I actually should take it down to the curb or something. I actually took the cable off of the um the front transmission so I could use it for the choke cable. Um, the reason it's not going to run anymore is because it needs a new ignition coil. I figured, you know what, we already got another push mower here that runs pretty nicely. Who needs this anymore? It's too heavy too. Even like even though it's got self-propelled on it, that's the, only, that's the thing that winds up making it hard to push in the first place. Um, I also took off the handle to the pull start rope and replace and put it on this one. See? It's actually much better. This thing, I have parts wait, uh, that are going to be on their way here too for this. I now have the air filter assembly ready for it. Um, I did a lot of tinkering with it last week or the week before or something like that where I was uh, trying to, I, I actually fully cleaned out the carburetor this time instead of just wiping it off in place I actually I made sure to clean out the jet and stuff and I tried learning more about this engine because it's fascinating never had a overhead valve or overhead cam engine or had experience with one um, parts off that I need off of that one and I'm going to take that down to the curb some other time. And this one's waiting for its new air cleaner assembly. Back to this. Um, basically the, the issue with the steering is they use a plastic bushing so you don't have to dig in there and grease it. But the problem with it is um, the bushing is now the shape of an oval on the inside, so this wobbles around a lot. If I can, rep and I have a new bushing coming, where I'm going to replace that so that it's tight steering. Um, I don't know. I have to start this today because I think the parts are going to get here by Wednesday. Today's Saturday. And plus I have nothing else to do. So, let's see how far we get. Alright. Let's go in here a little bit. That's what I have to replace. That right there. That's a plastic steering bushing. It's supposed to keep the steering shaft in one place. They make it plastic, like I said, because it um it uh it doesn't require lubrication. The, the 
course, when I put the new bushing in, I'm going to grease it along with these gears anyway. And uh, with how it's shaped, especially when I, make, when I try to turn left, it slips. You can see how the, the teeth aren't quite in there. Hopefully the replacement uh, bushing will actually uh, help with this. I'm thinking this this engine's in the way. I thought about taking it off, but it is incredibly big and incredibly heavy, I imagine. I won't be able to lift it out. That was the toolbox. Just, wind just knocked out. I really don't know how I'm going to get this out because there was something on the bottom, I think, where I can't quite reach in there at any good angle to try and get to it. I could try and take this whole steering bracket out, but it's going to be a huge pain in the ass. That's why I'm starting this uh, now and not like a couple days before. Not like a day before the part comes. Let's see how far I get later on. Uh, look what I found. I had the clutch pedal off, but check out that hole. See how that comes up in there? I think that's where the safety switch was. That's the wire that can that connect. Yeah. What I'm guessing is it rusted off at some point. That right there was the reason why the solenoid wouldn't even work. Like, my ignition switch wasn't working. And just a side, side clip here. Look what came in the mail today. Our new choke cable. Awesome. All nice and shiny and clean and brand new. I love eBay. The other parts I'm waiting for, like the steering bushing, I'm got to wait on that. But um, and the pieces for the Honda. I'm actually gonna go and run that in a minute. I gotta grab a glove because it likes to kick back at me because I took the blade off. But um, yeah. I can't put this on until until I get the steering fixed. Craftsman with a Honda GCV 160 engine on it. And then there's a GC and then there's a GCV. This is GCV because it's vertical shaft. Put the zip tie on, the, on here. I have to close off so that nothing goes in. I have to actually open up the valve here. I'll let some gas flow in a little bit and then I'll close it off again because I don't want it running for too long. I like to drain the gas out. Or run it out of gas so that there's nothing left in the carb. Although I might just leave it alone. Okay, I smell the gas, so let's get this thing going. I'm gonna set the camera down for a minute because I kind of need two hands here. Chokes on. Come on. Whatever. Um, I'm actually there's still gas in it, but I don't care. I'm gonna be running it in a few days anyway. But yeah, that's that's the show. It's actually running steadily. Um, what happened was I uh, I actually couldn't get this running, so I decided, hey, let's get this thing to try and run this again. And, uh, what happened was, like, I was able to get it running, like, with the washers keeping that carb on, uh, spacing it enough. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't let off the choke, though, because it was hesitating a lot. It was surging and backfiring. In fact, when I started up, there's a lot of blue smoke going all over the place, I guess, from oil. It must have been tipped over on so many, like, in, I don't know. 
been smoking quite a bit. Actually, it's kind of cool. But yeah, that's that working. Um, this is going to be the front lawn mower. I think I used that the last time I actually ever cut the grass for the season until it, until fall came. This thing hasn't run since, I guess, before then. I don't know. As you can see it's kind of stripped. It's done.